Thank you so much for sending them in. Um, the most common question I think that we get or questions relate to timelines. What day do we get out of the quarantine hotel? What day do we meet Toby? When do we get home? We, in Taiwan, the law is that you have to quarantine in a specified quarantine hotel for 14 days and 15 nights. So we will get out of the quarantine hotel on the 13th of October and in Taiwan, we're not sure exactly who this rule is, but we have to spend another seven days in what's called self-health management and be social distanced from people during that time. So we're not allowed to meet Toby, his social worker, his family, anybody like that until October 20th. Then we'll spend four days transitioning and ultimately we'll fly out on October 25th. Is there anything that you wish that you had brought? So I, the only thing I can think of that I forgot was tweezers, but I wish I'd brought a throw blanket and slippers. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Uh, I forgot to bring a proper mouse, which has been a big frustration oh, yeah. for editing the videos. And I wish that I had brought salt and pepper. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? Are we going to rent a car this time? Uh, no, not this time. So usually when we travel to Taiwan, we rent a car, we're fully comfortable driving around. It's great. Um, Sounds fully for comfortable for driving around. <laughs> so for this trip, uh, because we're staying in Taipei the whole time, and because the, the transit system's awesome, we are not going to rent a car. We're just going to do the trains. Have we run out of snacks yet? Definitely not. <laughs> Sean keeps teasing me that I'm rationing too strictly because he doesn't want to take any of the snacks out of the ho quarantine hotel. He might have to. Is it harder to wait for Toby now that we're physically closer to him? I personally think that this stage up to this point has just been the push to like get through quarantine, like get here and then get through quarantine. But I think next week when we're out and about, um, kind of being tourists, that's going to be more challenging because that third week is kind of unprecedented and hard to understand why we can't just meet him. So I think this week's just quarantining frustration that way, but I, the wait's okay. We got to Skype with him today, which was fun. I think I agree with you. I think that like the waiting up until this point just feels like waiting, just like it's always felt like waiting. Mm -hmm. But like being out on the street, just kind of killing time again, yeah. killing time again. Uh, it's going to be hard. Yeah, we'd rather kill the time. We'd rather ha meet him and then tour him with him. Yeah. How are you staying sane in the quarantine hotel? <laughs> well, are you sane in the quarantine <laughs> hotel? Uh, well, first of all, I'd recommend that you watch our other video where we talk about the things that we do every day. Um, yeah, but within that, like, I think the most important things have been, like, having a little bit of structure to the day, like making videos, getting a little bit of exercise, like that's been significant. Yeah. I think having stuff to do, I've been doing paint by number and even just like getting out of bed and like getting dressed, getting the day going, opening the blinds, I think is like the oomph you just need to like start the day right. How do you explain why you adopted to your kids? That is a good question. We talk about adoption all the time in our house. We have conversations about our kids' first families and about adoption in general and about the places they were born, um, how their adoption happened. And it's very, like, it's just very common in our house. And at the same time, we have not explained to our children why we chose to adopt instead of having birth, having biological kids. Um, they don't really know where babies come from. They know that people have babies and they know that we didn't give birth to babies but we haven't explained to them why we didn't do that. Why did we choose international adoption instead of domestic adoption? So this is an interesting question that's very different, I think, depending on the person. But for us, we, when we decided to adopt, we were really just drawn to international adoption, I think. We, that was like our number one. We just started looking into that. But of course, you know, as we had conversations, we definitely looked at domestic adoption, which is adoption within the same country that you live in. Um, and the options there would have been domestic infant adoption where an expectant mom chooses a family while she's still, you know, or like when her child's born and then, or through foster care. And, um, ultimately we just knew that every kid, every vulnerable mom mattered and, uh, there wasn't like a right or a wrong answer. And that's going to be different for everybody. But we just felt like as Canadians, especially there were systems in place for kids in Canada. And um, yeah, just this is where we went.
Does Taiwan try to place children in Taiwanese families first before trying to match them with international families? They do actually, and that's something that we really appreciate about Taiwan. They seem to be aware that there's a good hierarchy when it comes to placing kids in families. That their first attempt should be to place kids. Uh, first of all, best place for kids to be is in their own biological families. Yeah. After that, um, kinship care, like with your own, within your own family. After that, um, inside your own community, birth culture, all of that sort of thing, and then sort of underneath all of those, um, placed outside of your own culture in an international family. Yeah, yeah, we love that Taiwan does that. We we do really feel that um, countries and programs that are doing a good job are they're pursuing those options first. And so um, one of the questions about this was, is it harder than for us to adopt from Taiwan? And the answer is yes, but that's good. Um, we do really think they should prioritize looking for families within Taiwan for all children in Taiwan that end up ultimately needing to be adopted. And um, then on kind of the other side of that, if you are a family that's pursuing adoption from Taiwan, then you do need to be open to more special needs and more family backgrounds and um, older kids. And that's okay. Um, that is what we signed up for and that is what we're we are in this for and so um we are we are very thankful for how taiwan kind of um does adoption well in these ways obviously no system is perfect and also um in our kids adoptions we do really want to try and do our due diligence to do it well thanks so much for your questions feel free to reach out and message us we'd love to talk to you as we go through all this